exit discharge. Exit shall terminate directly to the exterior of the building. Under certain conditions, up to 50% of the exits are permitted to discharge through the interior areas of the building. The exit discharge shall provide a direct and unobstructed, unobstructed access to the public way, and the capacity of exit discharge shall not be reduced and shall not be and shall not le not be less than the required discharge capacity of the exits being served. All right, so here we see this. You're allowed up to 50% um, to not be connected, to be not be connected directly to the exterior. All right, so you could see C. You put onto the corridor, and in here, the idea is you go right onto the corridor, and then the actual exit, the exterior door, I shouldn't call it an exit, the exterior door of the building is visible. So you'll leave the exit, and then you can start walking. And then this blue space is actually the exit discharge. And then again with D, you go out here, and then you're in a protected vestibule. So you go in here, and then you could easily go out the exit to the exterior door. And then A, um, the stair. The stair discharges directly to the exterior of the building, and then B does not, and we need B to discharge directly to the exterior of the building because we already have the other two, so we can only have 50%, so they connect us with an exit passageway. And the idea is we go from one exit enclosure into another equivalent exit enclosure, and that leads us to the exterior of the building. <laughs> okay. Okay. An area of refuge is generally used as a staging area for people with limited mobility who have difficulty traveling vertically through an, e through an egress route. <laughs> and it's, there's a two definitions here. It could be one of the following. Um, it could either be a story in a building where the building is protected throughout by an approved supervised automatic sprinkler system and has not less than two accessible rooms or spaces separated from each other by smoke resisting partitions and the second is a space located in a path of travel <clears throat> leading to the public way that is protected from the effects of fire either by means of separation from other spaces in the same building or by virtue of location thereby permitting a delay in egress travel from any level all right so an area of refuge is generally used as a staging area for people with limited mobility who would have difficulty traveling vertically through an egress route. The area provides relative safety to its occupants while the potential emergencies are assessed. An area of refuge might be a component of a subdivided story, such as an elevator lobby or an enlarged stair. Um, NFPA 101 also recognizes that any floor that is fully sprinklered in a building to be an area of refuge. And basically there, they're saying that if you're in a floor that's fully sprinklered and a fire were to happen and you, were, you couldn't navigate down the stairs, you're going to be in a very uncomfortable situation. But if the sprinkler is controlling the size of the fire, that you're not going to be in a life-threatening situation. Um, so typically when you walk into a new building, you won't see a whole lot of area of refuge because most buildings are sprinklered and you get around it that way. The area of refuge is required to have two-way communication between the area of refuge and the central control point, right? So, so they want the person who's in the area of refuge to be able to talk to the firemen, right? They, they, want, they want to be giving them updates and they want the firemen to know where they're at and accessing it and they want to know that they're still safe. So that communication is, is critical 